All right, we are back in the booth on Friday night. And we are gonna paint the first lure in the new booth. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this jumbo topwater rat from Lure Build. Um, you can go to lurebuild.com. Jimmy has everything for your, your lure supply needs, blanks, eyes, paints, stencils, uh, you name it, Jimmy's got it. So go check him out, lurebuild.com. So let's get to it. I actually haven't even put a base coat on this one yet. So I figured we'd go ahead and do this one from start to finish. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get my new Galeri gun out the ace. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spray the base coat with it. I'm actually going to use a... Um, a solvent based paint. I'm gonna start out with a House of Color base coat white. And we're gonna spray the entire bait with it. I don't do a whole lot of mice and rats, so <laughs> this is gonna be a, a little bit out of my comfort zone. So I got the gun loaded up. I've got the air pressure on about 25 and we'll just go ahead and hit it. I'm gonna turn my, my fan on. It's very quiet. It sucks the fumes right on out. This is actually a build weight bait, so it's gonna have a bill on the front, and we'll do a little fun thing with that. Good thing about the solvent-based paints is it dries very quickly. Very quickly it dries. And this gun has a .38 nasal nozzle setup, so it's a little bit different than what I'm accustomed to painting with. It uh, it does a really good job, though. I've been really pleased with the gun. You know, I did a video on it earlier in the week, and it had very good response. The company actually sent me an email telling me thanks for doing the, the review, but it is. It's actually a very good gun. let that dry just for a second and I'm gonna put a second coat on that it dries pretty much it's pretty warm in the shop today too it's been 84 degrees here in Augusta Georgia so it uh it is definitely on the warm side I just want to make sure I get it really covered good because I'm going to try another technique tonight that I have used in the past on doing a few rat baits, the few that I've done. I don't do a, a whole lot of these, but I saw the, the blank on Jimmy's website and I was just kind of wanting to do something a little bit different besides a crawl and um, a shad and brim, bluegill, whatever. I just wanted to make sure that I just kind of stay, stay sharp. So we're gonna we're gonna let that dry, and I'm gonna clean the gun out. Um, and when I use those solvent-based paints, I clean it out um, with acetone. So it's just it pretty much takes it right on out. And in this shop, I don't have all my stuff set up, so I'll just blow it into this, to this cup. And if you can see the smoke's just going right out the ventilation system, so that's that's kind of nice. It helps, keeps all that going. 
this is a very heavy bait. I don't know what the the bait weighs. Uh, I'll try to get Jimmy to comment in the in the comments after I post the video. Um, but it's very heavy. It's it's big. I would say it's probably a couple ounces easy. But it's definitely going to be a fun challenge to play around and paint with it. I'm going to use some uh, Whitmore Farm stencils. Um, Jeff has great products, so go check him out at whitmorefarm.com. And I'm going to use some stuff from Insane Custom Stencils, Russ Allen. I'm going to go ahead and use his his rat wheel, which is very cool. Russ has great products, too. Two great guys. Can't go wrong with either one of them. They both have very good products, so go check them out and support them. dry for a minute. Okay. So we'll put that on up and we'll swap over. I'm going to go to my Creos PS771 for this. And we're going to go with some uh, gold and black. I'm gonna cut the pressure down though. When I do stencils, I like to get a lot lower on pressure, probably around 10 to 15 in between that. I don't, I don't like to blast my stencils when I do them. Sorry about my phone holders doing a little bit of bouncing. So we'll get some golden and all this is, is the golden carbon black, probably, probably one of the best blacks you can use. And I'm just going to start out with a little bit of black, and then we'll kind of go off of that. Still haven't quite got the whole shop set up yet. I don't have a, I've got to get me a little tub for my, my dry tip. So what I'll do, let me get this same position the way I want it. I want y'all to be able to see it. I'm still getting used to painting in this big booth. I'm kind of far away from it. So um, I'll go ahead and start on the sides here and do a little bit. Down. There we go. I'd cut it down, cut it off. So I'll just do a light area. Just kind of run over top of it. Mix it up a little bit. I like to use sepia. Um, little bit of gray. I kind of just play around with it. Nothing. This is a great little stencil Russ has come up with. Kind of let you kind of play with stuff and come up with some new techniques for these rat baits. Also use the fan. You can buy these at Hobby Lobby. That's where I got it. Go ahead and do a little bit here. I'm gonna pick 
pick it up, try to just put these pads on. Just touch that up. I'll go ahead and just hit it while I got this up. Prios is a great detail brush. It really is. All I'm doing is kind of just touching the feet up a little bit. You're going to be doing a lot of stuff around it, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So what we'll do is we'll set that down and put my gun down just for a second and bend it back over. That was good. I don't like using helping hands. I didn't gotten so used to those fly tying vices that I could care less about helping hands. I know a lot of people love them. I don't care anything about them at all. I would much rather use my fly tying vice than fooling with these helping hands. But these baits are so big that it makes it almost impossible to, to not use them. Take this off and get my dry tip. I haven't set up my, my little sponge bath for my dry tip. to shake that's what I don't like about it starts coming to life. It's kind of a, a really cool stencil to have. So go check Russ out at InsaneCustomStencils.com and get you one of these. Whoa. Yeah, this bait is very heavy, very heavy. Okay, so we'll set this down and take a look at it and see what's, see how we got it going on. So you can see it's actually starting to come together a little bit. And uh, and what I'll do now is um, sometimes I'll take a, I'll just take an X-Acto knife and just scratch it. it. Makes it look like it's got hair. That's kind of a neat little trick to use. just in certain little areas, some of the darker areas. And I'll get some sepia out. I'll use a little bit of sepia or you can do sienna or gray. I do like using gray on mice. Them 
didn't put a whole lot of black on this side. And you can do this technique with any of the colors. It does, it gives it a, a whole, um, different look. clean the gun out. This new Galeri gun has definitely got a deep well in it. You gotta, you really gotta be careful when you're cleaning this gun. Because that paint will deceive you. It'll sit in there. And I've learned that you want to make sure that you clean it out really good. Like I said, if you're looking for a detailed brush, I'll be honest with you, I don't think you could go wrong for the money. All right, so let's get a little, little bit of sepia in the gun. I'm gonna use some golden. I mean, I'm sure mice or, <laughs> or rats, whatever you want to call it, are pretty much, they're, I'm sure they're different everywhere. And just kind of have fun painting it. That's, that's going to be the kicker. That's all I really try to do is kind of just be a little different and have some fun with it. You can just tap your brush off. That's why I like to carry uh, paper towels at the front part of my booth. shut off for some reason. I don't know why, but it did. Spin that around. Yeah, I absolutely dislike helping hands. Sure, there's a lot of people on here that love them. I just am not that guy. I don't, they just, I like to spin my lure and paint. I've done it for so long, I'm used to it. I usually have to put multiple colors on this thing before I can ever make it even look right. I've seen field mice and rats that look, look so different. Okay. Do. We're going to go ahead and put some, some of this sepia around the eye socket and darken it up because I'm going to use a black eye, so I think it'll, it'll, it'll look a little bit better. A little 
little bit on this bottom. Still gonna leave some of that white because I'm gonna put a little bit of gray on it. Kind of gives it a, a real unique look. Leave it in the comment boxes below what you like to do with rats. Like I said, this is a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I've painted a few, but I saw this and I really wanted to do it just to have some fun with it. So I'm gonna clean the gun out and I'm gonna put some, a little bit of shading gray in the gun. The sepia is such a, a versatile color, it's not even funny. It really is a good color. All right, so we're gonna grab a little bit of shading gray, which is gonna be golden. Put that up. We're gonna go ahead and grab this. I don't knock everything down. Still not used to painting in here. My camera's a lot lower in here than my than the norm. So I'm kind of having to just have to get used to it. The gray kind of softens everything up. I kind of like that better. It makes it look a little bit more natural. And there's so many cool little things on the wheel to use that kind of hard to decide. Put that nose, paint that nose area gray. It's turned out pretty good. Every time I move it to go forward, it wants to lay down. I'm trying not to drop the thing. I'm trying to keep it in the camera too. Gonna fill that in a little bit gray. Take some of that white out of it. Let that dry for a second. And what we can do is we can start to paint the bill and we'll do a little fun thing with the bill that um, Pete at Reckless Rodents made famous was doing the little piece of cheese as your bill. And I figured I'd do that. This is going to be mine. I want to do something a little different with it. So what I'll do is I'll hold it with this. Just on the tip. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint it yellow. I'm gonna have to let it dry. I didn't bring anything out here to heat set with, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to play with it a little bit. Clean 
this out really fast. Pretty sure I'm done with the gray. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put a little bit of golden um, yellow median in the gun. I'd already opened it, got it all over my hand. That was good. And then we're just gonna put a coat of paint over the bill. Uh, just do it light, put a couple coats on it. all it takes and you can see it's just you make it look like a little block of cheese and um and we'll let it stand up here and just let it dry and i think what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to take i'm going to go ahead and cut that fan off for a little bit i don't need it on right now without me painting and i'm just going to take it and just Just rough it up a little bit. It makes it look like it's got fine hairs and it kind of really is the finishing touch, with, especially around here in the face when you have those little whiskers and stuff on them. when you put your top coat on you won't see it at all you know it's it'll have that scratched up look but when it's done it'll look really cool and you don't have to do a lot on it just just enough to give it a little more detail kind of really gives it a really does finish it up a little bit kind of gives it the little extra that it does need I don't do it hard just lightly just kind of scratch it up just a little bit Gives it kind of a really unique look. I mean, you can do them any color you want. I mean, I, I usually do most of mine in this color. I use the black, the shading gray, and a little bit of sepia. And it just kind of matches up somewhat with what we have where I live. So it kind of it kind of works for me. I'll do a little bit on this front face especially where the nose is. So 
let that dry for a minute. I gotta let this dry because I don't have, I'll dry it with the airbrush. Let me clean this gun out. That'd be, that would be nice. Like I said, I don't edit film, so you see it like I do it. If I screw it up, you're going you're gonna to see it. You definitely don't want to leave paint in your airbrush. I've done that plenty of times. That doesn't work out well for you, I promise you. I'll tell you what I have liked. I've liked the little Fortress um, two-gallon... Uh, compressor I've gotten from Harbor Freight. I mean, it's it's very quiet. I don't have, I've had no problems with it. Like I said, I just started painting out in this shop, so I really hadn't had a ton of time to use it, but so far I've really enjoyed it. Very quiet. And it comes with a tail. I, I've never, so it looks like that, kind of cool which I'm sure we need to glue it in, and I will when I put the top coat on. I just put it in there so you could see it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish it off by doing this little trick. Like I said, this is, I think Pete at Reckless Rodents made this famous. He does such fantastic rat baits. It's not even funny. This thing's still gotta dry. I'm gonna dry it off with the airbrush. Put the air on low. Just dry it off. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a stencil from Jeff at Whitmore Farms. It's actually a circle stencil. Um, Jeff actually sent me some new stencils here today um and i'm going to be doing a video on them over the weekend so i appreciate the stencils jeff but this is the circles v3 and it's kind of unique because it's got one two three four five different size circles you can cut them apart and have them uh, a thin stencil which i'm gonna do that but today i'm just gonna take it we're gonna move our bait over and i'll move it out here where you can see it and all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna lay it over like this and just make it look like holes in the cheese so that's that's pretty much all i'm going to do with that so we're going to put a little bit of carbon black in the gun you won't need a lot i mean you can put as many in it as you want put it on low pressure and uh and then what i'll do is i'm just gonna lay the stencil over the bill and just just put some Put some holes in it just for the for the cheese. That one had a little bit of reducer on it. That ain't good. I may have to clean that one off. You take it off, y'all might clean that one. That one kind of splattered on me. So I'll take it and just run around the outside of that. It may not come off without me taking something to it. Put a little bit of reducer on it. Yeah, that's why you always want to shoot your gun, check it when you clean it. I didn't do that, so I goofed. But it's nothing that can't be fixed. I'll usually just go ahead and just take it all off, but you can see where the black is shadowed in just from putting the stencil over it. All right, so what we'll do, we'll just lay it back over and I'll try to line it up the best I can to get it lined up. I wonder I'm on the wrong one, that, that would help. So we line it back up and just hit that one one more time. That's a lot better. Okay, 
So that worked out a little bit better. So it just looks like a block of cheese with a bunch of holes in it. It's kind of, kind of a neat little technique that Pete came up with. And we'll just lightly go over this side. Take it off. Let it dry for a second. Go ahead and clean our brush out. And we'll go ahead and end this video. Definitely want to make sure you clean that black out. But with the stencil, like I said, uh, Whitmore Farms and Jeff, go check him out for this circle stencil. I got some really cool stencils from Jeff actually today in the mail. I'll be doing a video on those uh, over the weekend. But go check him out for sure with this circle stencil. And, um, and the rat wheel from Russ Allen. Uh, definitely go check it out. It's a, it's a very, very cool stencil. Um, Russ has been the, the innovator of stencils from this, since this lure painting started. He's, he's just a fantastic designer and a fantastic guy on top of it. So go check Russ out. This is the Rat Wheel 3. Uh, you can get those at insanecustomstencils.com. And I'll put the bait back here. Soon we'll dry this off with the airbrush. And then we'll put it on. And then we'll wind it up. I'm not going to put the top coat on video. It's already lasting a little bit longer than I thought. So we'll take this off. And we'll go ahead and take it out. And it's got a notch. It's got another deep notch there. I hope I'm not going to have to. It's got a burr on it. I may have to pop that off, but I'll try to get it on here for just for video purposes. There it goes. So that's pretty much what you get. What I do with the tail? I lost his tail somewhere. Oh, I dropped it on the ground. That's because I hadn't got it secured. Hang on just a second, guys. Sorry about that. All right. So let's flip this over so it's white where we can see it. And put the tail back in i'll secure that tail later but this is the jumbo rat from jimmy with a cool looking oh we got to put the eyes in it we still got to put the eyes and i'm getting a step ahead everybody hang on just a second i'm going to use just some black eyes that i've gotten and we'll put them on in That really finishes the job big time. These are uh, seven millimeter eyes. You can get these at lurebuild.com also. They're just jet black eyes. So that's pretty much what you get. It, um, if I keep losing the tail, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that a thousand times. Um, I hope everybody likes the video. Hope we, you learned something new and maybe a new technique, especially with the scratching technique. Um, so hit the like, the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification. So you know when I have upcoming videos. And like I always say, I'll catch you next time. Thanks.